Today we're going to be talking about coyotes, bugs, snakes, rodents, and termites. Doesn't that sound fun? So how big of an issue are these pests in the Temecula Murrieta Valley? That's what we're going to talk about today and we're starting right now. Hi, Jessica Janung here with Active Realty. I am a local realtor here in the Murrieta Temecula Valley and I post a new video every week telling you everything you need to know about living here. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Also, I have a relocation guide that you can download. It's down below in the description. It's available for immediate download and has great information if you're considering relocating here. So this topic is a little bit different of a video than we normally do, but I have had a lot of people asking me questions about bugs or rodents, uh, mosquitoes, that kind of thing. So I thought that I would cover it today. We are gonna start with coyotes. I grew up in the town of Fallbrook where coyotes are way more common and could almost be seen on a, as a daily occurrence. Fallbrook, by the way, it's the next town south of Temecula. Uh, it's much more rural. Most homes are on a minimum one acre lot. In the Temecula and Murrieta area where we live now, there are coyotes, but it's not as huge of an issue. You just need to be educated about them and take a few steps to prevent any issues. The main danger of a coyote is to your small pets like dogs and cats. I do hear from time to time on our local social media channels that someone has lost a pet due to a coyote. Normally, if you read about the circumstances, the owners of these pets were just not careful or very educated in the matter. So here are some important tips. Tip number one, do not let your pets run loose and do not leave them outside alone unsupervised. If you are letting your dog, especially your small dog, out to go to the bathroom, stay with them and do not go back inside until they are done and they are with you, coming back with you inside. Coyotes are typically quite scared of people. There is no need to run away. Their recommendations are to make some noise and they will run off. Typically what happens is they see you and they go the other direction or they keep on going where they were headed. Tip number three, you want your fencing to be at least six feet tall. They have been known to climb fences. Um, obviously do not leave your gates open. Just be careful about that. Tip number four, they are very smart and they can remember where a small pet lives. At my last home, I remember a coyote walking by my fence, looking at my small dog, um, although it was walking and it kept going. Be aware that they will likely remember where that small animal lives and can even be watching you when you're not aware. So be extra careful at this point. Speaking of being smart, they have a few different sneaky tactics for getting their dinner. One example I have heard of is that they can pretend to be friendly and playful with a dog and lure them away from the home to their pack. They hunt in packs and can even go after larger dogs when they are in that pack. Usually they prefer small dogs and cats, but large dogs are not completely safe either. In rare instances of human aggressiveness, you want to report this to the authorities immediately. It's very rare. Let's move on to bugs. We don't have much of a bug problem here because of low humidity. Ants though can be a problem, especially during heat waves. I recommend spraying quarterly for ants and spiders, and that has worked well for us. Mosquitoes are not a huge problem either. We do have them, but not overwhelmingly. There is no need for screened in porches or pools. We have had some flies this year for whatever reason. It seems like we always had like one or two flies that happened to find its way into the house and that was a new thing for us this year. Our friends recommended this Dynatrap fly trapper and I do think that it has helped. We hung it outside above our trash cans and so far so good. Next, we are going to talk about snakes. <laughs> there are several different kinds of snakes in the area, although not a huge issue either. The main issue would be a rattlesnake encounter. And if you or your pet is bitten, you would wanna seek medical attention immediately. I have lived in Murrieta for about 11 years now, and I have never seen a rattlesnake. I do, however, see social media reports of the sightings, especially in the brushy and the open areas, such as up in the Santa Rosa Plateau. I start to see those postings in the beginning of summer typically when the snakes come out of hibernation. Most people who get bit inadvertently step on them. So watch where you're walking, especially when out hiking on those trails. The Santa Rosa Plateau, by the way, that I just mentioned, it's part of the Cleveland National Forest and it's located in the hills in West Murrieta. It is a very large and popular place for hikers and those that love the outdoors. It is huge, um, but with all that wilderness does come some wildlife like snakes. 
Moving on to field rats. There are field rats that live in the area. I have not yet sold a home in the area that had an active rat issue, but there has been evidence of previous problems, including droppings and the occasional carcass in the attic. Ew, I know. <laughs> Here are some quick tips to prevent a rat from making a home in your home. The pest control companies, they use these black bait boxes with poison and they put them in the corners of your property typically. You can do this on your own too, of course. My other tip is to make sure that your house has no entry points and that your mesh vents are sealed, that your doors have no gaps in the corners and that you cut away any overgrown trees and you make sure that they're not touching the roof or the house. Last, we're gonna talk about termites. We do have termites in this area, although not as big of an issue here as it is in more moist climates. It is rare to need to have your house fumigated in our area, but it certainly does happen sometimes. I have a client currently in escrow on a home in Canyon Lake and the termite company is recommending fumigation. We are getting a second opinion on this one because it is rare, but it can happen. Because termites are such a lengthy and involved topic, I am going to make a separate video telling you all about it. We recommend that every home buyer receive a termite inspection report when purchasing a home. Most of the time, the seller is going to pay for this report and it is common for the seller to take care of any section one findings that are found in that report. Keep on the lookout for my upcoming video on termites where I will go into much more detail on this topic. Well, that wraps up um, this video on pests. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.